from a Western society, what a lot of us do when we are looking for help and ways to bring the happiness and peace back to our life. What do we usually do? We eat, great, we eat chocolate chip cookies, call friends to talk. What else we do? Reach out, Reach out go to therapy, yeah. And that's exactly what I did. The first thing that I did to try to heal myself and bring the sense of happiness and peace, I went to therapy. And I remember, like it was yesterday, the day that I met was my first American therapist. So I was kind of excited to go. <laughs> and, and I remember that in her office, she had this really unique couch that was so unique that I didn't know if it was for me just to sit on it or just to look at it and take some pictures and, you know, because it was really unique. And she opened the door and here was the couch. And for you to picture what I'm talking about, I got a similar couch just to show you. Truly, bring the couch. Can you please bring the couch? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So I sat on the couch and I started talking about, you know, my problems, that I was feeling lost, that I was feeling overwhelmed, that I didn't know what to do. So after a long conversation that I talked about, you know, me, myself, and I, my husband, my mom, and then my mom again, <laughs> she looked at me and she decided to prescribe me some antidepressants. And for some reason, I didn't feel comfortable with the option. Not that I thought there was a wrong option or something, but something inside of me said, you know what, I'm going to look for other options, other alternatives to bring the peace and happiness back to my life. So I remember that I went to a bookstore and I was looking for a book that would kind of inspire me. And I found this really wonderful book about happiness written by a Buddhist monk. And he talked about in his book how it's important for us to find time to sit down and meditate. And I remember that I loved so much that book that I was like, you know what, I'm going to apply. And I, that time I was a stay-at-home mom. So I was trying to meditate between changing diapers, doing the laundry, trying to find the perfect but not so sexy babysitter. <laughs> and, you know, and I was trying to meditate. I was trying to meditate. And after an exhausting and unsuccessful result, I realized that even though I love that book, even though I know the amazing benefits of meditation, even though I have an immense respect for Eastern philosophy, I couldn't help myself thinking that Buddha didn't have PMS. <laughs> but you know what? I'm a woman. We are women. That's who we are. So that's when I started my journey to find ways and practical ways to feel healthier, happier, powerful, sexier, even with my crazy schedule and my crazy PMS. And what I found out that completely transformed my life and brought me here today wasn't something new. Actually, I found out one of the oldest healing process that exists in the world that helped me to develop diva dance, and I can't wait to share with you. All over the world, in a lot of Indian tribes and African villages, if you look for a healer to help you with your problems, most of them, they're not going to look at you and say, you know, sit down on the couch, talk about your problems, I'm going to prescribe you a pill. No. Do you know most of those healers would do? They would say to you, get off the couch. Let's call the community together. Let's bring the drums. And let's start Dancing, okay? Yeah.